in a market where it it can be volatile you know we never know what's going to happen i feel like long and steady is like the key um, and patience is also the key um, for like long-term success in nfts sure that's like my vision i love that sure Matt, what is happening, man? How are you feeling? I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? I'm fantastic. Very excited. Today, we have a very, very special guest that we'll get to momentarily. But before we do so, we really just want to set the stage for NFT Now. We're very excited about this podcast as we'll be bringing on some of the top artists, collectors, and technologists that are really paving the way for the future of the NFT space as it truly transforms the creator economy. In that vein, we couldn't be more excited to kick it off with a bang with the very special artist, Euphoria. Euphoria, real name, Alexi Prefontaine, is a 3D artist from Montreal. And after having made the leap from being uh, kind of a digital artist, doing a lot of work for commission, selling physical prints, he, he kind of made the leap into the world of NFTs and has quickly become one of the top NFT artists. As of this recording in early March... Uh, the total value of, of his art on CryptoArt.io is 1.1 million, and he's in the top 50 artists worldwide. Really excited about this episode as we cover how he went from being a digital artist to becoming a top crypto artist, how musicians and other entrants can, can actually come into the NFT space in an authentic way that's embraced by the community, and what the future has in store as NFTs go from niche to mainstream. What stood out to you, Matt? Well, it's really special to have Aphoria on here because he is one of the artists whose work first spoke to me uh, when I entered the NFT space. Um, I loved hearing him talk about how deeply personal his work is. Uh, he does not shy away from confronting difficult emotions and opening up about the doubts, fears, and desires that inspired his work uh, and formed the basis for his recent five fears drop on Nifty Gateway. Uh, one quote that really stood out to me when he said, for the first time ever, digital artists can actually be artists. I loved hearing how empowered he feels uh, to achieve his own creative vision and leave the commission work that he used to rely on in the rear view. Um, he's only pursuing organic collaborations with artists that feel right. And I thought he gave voice to a sentiment uh, of liberation that so many digital artists in the space are feeling as a result of the NFT technology. Yeah, no, love it. So if you haven't already, too, want to encourage you to subscribe to our Substack. We'll get email updates, commentary, freshly minted commentary at that uh, nftnow.substack.com. To check out Euphoria, visit him on Instagram, A E F. O R I A. And without any further ado, Euphoria. Alexi, how are you, man? Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm doing great, guys. What about you? Doing great. Fantastic. Um, very excited to have you on, man. I think uh, definitely, I think where we'd love to really start is just kind of your story. I know you've been doing uh, motion design and digital art for a while, selling physical prints. Can you talk a little bit about how you made the, the jump from being kind of a talented motion designer and digital artist into actually becoming, a honestly, one of the top NFT artists? Oh, um, yeah. Well, it's kind of just a random, a random story. Essentially, um, I got in this space because of uh, Gavin Shapiro. Um, you might know him for uh, the Flamingos. Uh, yep. he's the guy is is a guy who has um, those crazy loops that are so 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 fantastic and hypnotizing to watch. And so I remember back in September, he we, we were just chatting, you know, because we did a collab this summer uh, in 2020, and he 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 came to me and he was like, "Yo, um, you know, there's this platform I'm gonna release on. It's called Super Rare. You should check this out." And there's also a nifty gateway that's worth like taking a look. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what is it? And he, he talks about how like um, people are able to sell their digital art on those platforms in exchange of crypto. And I'm like, oh, well, that's, that's really dope. And not like without really knowing like what an NFT is or what it's all about, I just blindly jumped in. Uh, because I felt like, well, this seems like a like an interesting thing to try, uh, since it seems like it's growing a lot. Um, so he tells me that, and I apply to Super Rare and Nifty Gateway, and I must say, like in retrospect, that I was so lucky because um, back in September it was not as crazy as it is right now, right? Um, kind of started to boom a bit, like in October, November, and now since. Uh, January this year, it's just madness. <laughs> it's insane. And so 
I was lucky to like apply and get a response within three days, which is wow. now it's like st the standard is like three weeks or if even like three months. Uh, I have some friends um, who got in super rare after about three months of waiting for an approval. Um, so I, I had like a perfect timing to be honest, and I'm really grateful, grateful for that. And so for real, it's kind of just like a switch, like instant. I, I heard about it. I just applied. Then I minted my first piece uh, at the beginning of October, 2020. And then things started to change. Um, I sold my first piece within an hour <laughs> um, because I had this crazy offer from a very well-known collector in the space. And I was freaking out, you know, I was just like laid, laid back on my chair like this and just freaking out about like what was <laughs> happening, you know, like someone placed an offer of like, I, I, I at the time it was $2.7,000, which is crazy to me. You know, it's, I never like, this is kind of money I would get for an actual commission and for someone else on the visual that I don't really like. So <laughs> um, having this kind of like feedback from a collector on a piece that I really loved and that was close to me, that was surreal. And so there was a switch in my mind and I just fell in love with the space. Um, not just the idea of selling my work, but just the idea of like, having this freedom as an artist to, well, as a digital artist, um, to, this freedom to create for myself and share it to the world instead of spending my weeks, all my time just working for someone else and like trying to accomplish their vision and not mine. Um, that was so appealing to me. So that's kind of how I got into it. And then from there, I just spent so much time just focusing almost all my energy into this space really. No, a, a beautiful story, man. And I bet that that moment was definitely exciting and doesn't seem like it's really slowed down much since. Um, yeah. And also, I, I mean, I really do love the point you made as far as being excited about the fact that there is this fundamental shift of not just having to monetize your talent by way of commissioned pieces or um, but actually being able to have this kind of direct connection with it, with an audience, be able to sell the works with them. To dive even deeper into the story, I mean, after having sold your first piece, like it's clearly continued to grow. I think that the credibility you've been doing collabs, I mean, you've been had some incredible drops and we're excited to dive deeper into some of the, the specific drops. But what what do you think? Because there, there's a lot of other artists dropping a lot of a lot of art. Maybe it's not as good as yours. I don't think so. But <laughs> what do you think is what do you think? It has really helped you in, continue to kind of sustain this growth trajectory amongst these other people that are doing drops but not growing as much? Well, you know, I, I'm someone who's, when I'm into something, I just go like all in. And it's been, it's been like that forever since I'm a young kid. Um, when I was younger, it was homeworks. I was just all in in homeworks, striving to get like good grades and be, I was, I always like, like to be, proud of my hard work so I'm a hard worker and so it's not different with this space you know as soon as I got in my first reflex was to get involved in the community and find who like who were the artists the collectors and get to interact with everybody because I really I really felt this sense of strong community within the space and so I just wanted to be a part of it and so in my opinion it's like I, I didn't like, I'm not doing this just to, to do a quick cash grab and then leave. So for me, it was essential to be like methodic and um, purposeful in all my drops and releases. So that's why when you look on my super rare, there's not like a ton of pieces, only seven since October. Each piece is like, I, I, I tend to release like some of my older and more precious work to my eye. So I really wait and try to select the best work I've ever put out to put on super rare or some of the new pieces that I'm working on eventually end up there. Um, and so this kind of slow progression was probably instrumental in that. Like if I minted 20 pieces in November, I feel like that would have been detrimental to me. Um, so instead it was like some, some sort of like slow growth and a lot of unexpected situations, you know, um, I remember my first, three um pieces that i sold on super rare they sold in less than a day i was like i swear at, at first i was like 
is that it? Like, it's always going to be like that. But I, I soon, I soon realized that it, it's not like that. You don't like, it's not like how it works. Um, so as soon as I posted my first, my fourth one, um, nothing really happened. Um, I got some bids from a collector, but it was still too low compared to my previous sales. So I like didn't accept the offers and he just withdrew, um, the offer he placed and it stood there for three months. Um, until some collector randomly decided to buy my piece at list price. And that kind of set a new, like a new um, ceiling for my work out of nowhere, you know, like just classic patience, I guess. I just waited for the right thing to happen. And so like those situations, which are like part luck and part maybe like um, wise thinking or just like, straight up patience kind of helped me to get this progressive growth instead of like just going extra, extra hard at the very first week and kind of losing my momentum. I don't know if that makes sense because I'm still trying to understand it all. You know, it's not like a clear science to me on like what to do and what not to do. So, you know, Alexi, I, like, like I said before, you know, you were one of the, the first artists that I posted on the NFT now Instagram. I think that your work uh, is incredibly unique uh, and recognizable. It has sort of this otherworldly quality to it. Um, I don't know if you ever used to read Marvel comics, but it kind of reminds me a bit of like the cosmic entities there, whether it's like... Uh, <laughs> well, um, it's, it, well, first off, I'm so glad that you liked my work and shared it on your page. Um, yeah, it's true. Like those characters are surreal and I often get those um, those comments where they say, well, it looks like Dr. Manhattan... Um, and I'm like, yeah, true. <laughs> um, I used to watch a lot of, um, you know, Spider-Man and Batman as a kid, but I, I wouldn't say I was like the biggest fan of that, like genre it was mostly when I was a child, I was really into superheroes. I don't know if maybe subconsciously I kind of replicate that in some sort of ways in my characters, but I do agree that they have this kind of, um, sci-fi feeling to them. That's for sure. I'd love to hear a bit more about your creative process. Like, where do you draw your inspiration from uh, when you're creating these incredible works? Yeah, um, well, my my process is quite, like, sometimes it's quite tedious and really, like, it's really step by step. Um, of course, most of my body of work is focused around these characters, right? Um, so the first step in each piece that I make is always the pose of the character. Um, to me, just the body language of those characters can really hold a lot of emotion or, um, like emotion and feeling into them. And so I take a crazy amount of time just figuring out like what pose could my character have and what that represents. Uh, what what does that convey to the person who will who will view this artwork at the very end? So, whenever I'm creating, I'm trying to find like this very evocative pose. And usually, when when I find the right one, it kind of clicks something in my head, and it just gets me inspired. And so, when I export that character, I I often add clothing, or I just bring the character directly in Cinema 4D, where I start playing with. Um, lighting and colors and this is where the real fun lies for me like it's really in those um, those colors and compositions that I'm working on uh, this is the the most fun part of the process because um, I just I just love this idea of finding balance when I create an image because you know when you look at my work it's not crazy detailed it's very simple and each element is carefully placed um, in its in its position you know like if, if I add like a sphere, um, as random as it sounds, that sphere took me probably like several minutes just to find like where's the best position for it to, to make the, the artwork feel balanced. And so this is how it works for me. Um, whenever I'm working on a piece, I'm never calling it done until it feels right, until I can feel something when I'm looking at it. There's this kind of it's hard to explain, but there's this kind of visceral feeling, like this gut feeling down in my belly um, that tells me that it's done, that it strikes something in me. And so if it does strike something in me, well, that's 
that's as much as I can do, right? And after that, I, I can only hope that people connect as much as I did to the piece. Um, and so, yes, so there's this step. And afterwards, I always love bringing my visuals in uh, software like Photoshop to enhance, um, add some more texture or some clouds in the background. I always love to do those those stylistic approaches. Um, and then, yeah, it's ready to go and done. So I hope that's that that gives a good insight of my process. It's not like super linear, um, but it's always like very um, precise and I really try my best to make it look as good as I can. Yeah. Totally. Now you're coming off um, what was one of the biggest drops of your career, uh, Five Fears on Nifty Gateway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, I, and I know it was also, uh, you described it as one of the most personal series that you've ever done. Uh, and yeah. so I would love to hear a bit more about uh, the backstory on Five Fears and uh, what inspired it. Yeah, it's when I when I like look at this project, I still feel like this. It's very it's very packed, you know. Um, I was at the beginning beginning of the year um, in January, and I was kind of stressed about my drop. To be honest, I was I didn't have any ideas. I I, I knew I had to set the bar high for myself because it was my probably my biggest drop. Uh, to date because the first one in November was a series that already existed. And so I kept looking for subjects and I couldn't find anything. And I was chatting with one of, one of my friends, his name is too much lag. He's a, another artist in this space. Totally. And we were just talking about how, you know, online as an artist, we, we always want to show our best version of ourselves um, we always want to show the achievements, uh, the success that we have, um, the milestones that we that we end up like uh, not unlock unlocking, but just achieving in general. And and so when you're doing that yourself and others are doing that, sometimes it can be a little bit a little bit difficult to not to feel some sort of weight from all of this, like. When you open Twitter, it's always like this sale, this crazy project, this crazy innovation, this person has done this thing and this this girl has done this crazy artwork. It's revolutionary. And as an artist, you're looking at all this and you're like, whoa, wait a second. Like this is overwhelming. And so um, I kind of wanted to, to, to talk about that in some sort of ways and Naturally, um, what came out of this conversation was that we kind of all have those fears as an artist or just a, as a human being, like um, this fear of uh, making a mistake, right? Um, this fear of disappointing people who believe in art in in us. Um, as an artist, I don't want to disappoint my audience or um, my fellow artist friends or my collectors. Um, so this is extremely important. There's this fear of being le left behind, you know, the crazy FOMO, um, that's just so intense, at least for me. And, um, this, this fear of not staying true to myself and be dishonest. Um, cause what you portray on social media, is it really your true self or is it just an enhanced version of you? Uh, and so that was also um, one of the things that I thought about. And finally, the fear of being vulnerable, um, which is probably the most important fear out of, out of those five fears, because um, with this project, essentially, I represented those five fears through my characters. And um, it took me a lot of like courage to do that. I mean, I, I'm I'm really privileged to be an artist um, with a big audience. A lot of people look up to me, and just this 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 idea of like putting my fears out there to everybody was scary as hell. It was um, honestly, I, I I was I had so many doubt about my my idea and my project that I I had to to confirm with like three friends of mine to make sure that it was actually a good idea. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I was just stressed out about it. And 
I guess it's normal because when you open open yourself up to the world, it can be quite stressful. Um, but down the line, <laughs> it was probably the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> um, it's crazy in retrospect because um, first off, well, the job worked super well. Um, a lot of people just came and show up to purchase a piece and I was so honored. But more than that, all the feedback that I received was monumental. Like I never had so many people reach out to me for a project that I've done ever. Like sometimes when I share a piece, there's like 10 people who reach out and say like, oh, it's so great, I love it. But this was like straight up people just opening up to me like, oh, I relate to this so much and this gives me confidence in myself to work on my next project. And I, I thought I was kind of alone into this. And because you share that project, it gives me strength into pursuing my, my goals. And that just hit me like a truck. Uh, I remember one day I was, um, I shared the trailer for my project and I, I was tearing up almost all day. I'm not super emotional in general, but that was just so much positive feedback and love that I felt like I touched something in people um, that kind of something that can resonate with a lot of us, actually. So that's where the real beauty of this project lies for me. It's not necessarily the numbers that it made or whatever. It's like the impact it had on people, I would say. I, I absolutely love that. And I think the intentionality and thoughtfulness that went into the art and how that came to light, I think is one big factor that separates a lot of artists is, is kind of the, the depth and thoughtfulness and the, the kind of the process in which you're really trying to portray and express. Um, so it's really cool to, to hear that in a more granular level. One thing that stood out too, is that you just kind of mentioned um, the, the community and the, the, how the community can be supportive. I know you have some collabs that you've done. The NFT community, beyond just the artists, is a very supportive space. Everybody's trying to talk with each other. Everybody's very open. Um, I'm very curious from your perspective, like what is special about the community to you and, and how have you really leaned into that by way of either supporting others or finding unique collaborations that you want to do with your own art? Um, well, I think it all comes from this idea that for the first time ever as digital artists, we can actually be artists, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of crazy. Everybody in my circle, my friend circle, is just so excited to work on those passion projects that they had in mind forever and couldn't do because they were swamped with client work um, and all that jazz, you know? And so when you see that kind of like positive energy that comes from this newfound ability to work on those projects, it just, you can just feel it in this space, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I feel like a lot of people might just see the numbers and all that, but beyond the numbers, what I really see is people actually be being able to live from their art, not from their client work or commissions or whatever you, you may call those. So this is so exciting. I mean, as an artist myself, um, I'm really drawn towards people who are actually working on those new projects. I, I'm just so eager to find like what everybody's working on. And that's why I'm so invested in the community and trying to get to know more people. And um, I also started collecting myself because uh, it's just so great to be able to help change lives. Um, also, as a collector myself, uh, it's just awesome. Totally agree with that. You know, I, I think that uh, you made made a great point about the community. It, it was amazing to see so many artists posting in, in support of Five Fears. Um, and, you know, I, I think that one thing that we're all sort of thinking about, and I know is a, a topic of conversation, is as uh, this influx of attention uh, and, and mainstream recognition uh, comes to the space, um, how, you know, the NFT space transitions from niche to mainstream culture uh, and, and how, how that happens while protecting the, the special community that exists here. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about that. Oh, that's tricky because there's going to be a lot of change in the space. Um, you know, all those mainstream names are going to come in. Uh, we can expect some 
huge celebrities dropping on Nifty Gateway or other platforms that might appear very soon. And so I don't know. It's it's hard hard to tell for me. I I kind of I kind of feel that it might be harder for us artists who are not like celebrities at the very core um, to strive as much as those big, big names who come in. But I feel like there's just always going to be people who are going to be drawn towards the actual artists, um, not just celebrities coming in and hiring artists to do visuals for them. Um, I feel like actual visual artists who are working on innovative projects, who are um, being open about their feelings or whatever in their projects, those artists in the long run, I feel like they have a huge potential for posterity. Is that a word in English? Um, You know, like long lasting effects on the space. Just an example. If there's this big television actor who drops on a platform like Nifty Gateway in two weeks. Do you really think this person is going to come in and interact within the space and get to know who are the artists and start collecting? Maybe, but most probably not. You know, it's just they come in, they make a revenue and they're probably, it's probably done afterwards. So as a collector, it's, it's appealing to collect a piece from that big name but it can also be appealing for a collector to collect work from an artist who's actually down in the trenches doing the hard work and making a name for, name for themselves and investing in an artist who's going to strive to improve over time. You know, um, I, I feel like there's so much value in that. Um, you see, like, um, that's why I collect in some artists who are just entering the space because I can see potential in their work already. And if they keep working hard for me it's really interesting because the recognition will grow over time and it's not going to be just a massive hit once and nothing after you know it's going to be like a slow a slow pace a slow road towards success and in a market where it it can be volatile you know we never know what's going to happen i feel like long and steady is like the key um, and patience is also the key um, for like long-term success in nfts sure that's like my vision i love that sure yeah i think one thing too that, that um stood out i mean a couple things and and one thing that excites me is you kind of spoke to the fact that there's people that are going to have a lot of value and appreciation and want to support and collect the, the artists that are there in the trenches and building i think what will also be interesting is seeing how the like art starts to go into different verticals and different domains of art. I think yeah. uh, obviously there's a lot of uh, excitement with regards to the digital art. I know we were speaking before about kind of like Blau releasing the album. Um, I- I'm very curious to see how this really starts to take shape with regards to, to artists and creators across all sorts of domains. In that vein, there's another, uh, a couple other points you, you'd brought up too. I mean, how like there's going to be celebrities that come in and maybe they do one big thing. They hire uh, an artist just to get the job done so they can like do the cash grab. I- I'm curious from your perspective, like the right and the wrong way. Because I-, I think there, there certainly are red flags and, and there's certain people that are coming in just to try and monetize audience and, and make a lot of money. But then there's other artists that are authentically interested. They, they see this being a potential paradigm shift for, for artists in general. And yeah, they might have an audience, but they want to come in and, and make an entrance into the space in a very tasteful way. Uh, do that with posterity over time. From your perspective, like what are like the, the right ways to do collabs for, for artists that might already have an audience across different domains that yeah. are looking to tastefully enter the space? Yeah, I kind of, I like this question. Essentially, since my drop, I got this wave of messages from artists who are reaching out. And of course, my first reflex is, are these artists really interested in like innovating or they're just interested in using my name that I work so hard for? Um, to get like a, a quick money grab. Um, that's just my, I, I'm always like that. I'm always like hesitant before um, joining any project. I'm always like trying to figure out what are the values of that person? Like what what's their core um, goal, like their, their main goal out of this. So 
what I'm trying to do, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm in the... I'm in the process of working on some collaborations with musicians, as an example. And what I told each musician is that I don't want this to feel like either I'm w- like creating visuals for your song mm-hmm. or you're making a song for my visuals. It, if it's like that, it's just like a commission, like the thing I'm trying to avoid at all costs right now. <laughs> so what I told one of the musicians who messaged me, actually, um, I like... I like his music a lot. So I told him, you know what? Let's just do like a Zoom call and get to know each other. Let's just talk about, you know, ourselves and get to know each other and um, and then try to discuss like what are our motivations in this space. And he was like, absolutely, man. I feel like this is a great idea. And so on our call on Thursday, we're going to just, we're going to just chat about anything and bounce ideas. What I find appealing in such a collaboration is the fact that we can both work on it together as much as we can and fair and equally. It's not just one person doing a favor for the other one because at the end of the day, it kind of just looks like a commission, as I said, and that's not what I want to do. So I feel like this approach of like doing a project 50-50 with the other artists um, and both of them being hands-on in the process, not just me doing my thing and then sending, sending him the visuals so he can score it. Um, That, that is not the goal, but if instead we can just push forward um, together, it, it will, in my opinion, make for um, a more genuine result and more uh, appealing result as well. It's going to feel true and authentic and very powerful. I love that too. And I think it it's funny because it, it comes back to the point you were making early on with regards to speaking through the different types of fears and the five fears. So I, I think just really trying to have that 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 depth, that 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 intentionality, the purpose behind the art. Because I think as supportive as the community is, it's just as easy for the community to sniff out who's here for the cash grab and who's here to actually yeah. have the, the authentic artistic expression and integrity. So I think um Love that it came back to, and it's interesting too because it's. I love even just the approach to like the brainstorming. I mean, I work with a lot of musicians, and the first step before we ever start like creating content and help them grow their own community online is to really get a deep, authentic understanding of who they are vulnerably as a person. Yeah, and I think that having that as the foundation of the creative process yeah. for these collaborations is uh, very exciting from my perspective. Yeah, and I feel like um, also the management team they should just step a bit away of the process <laughs> like because you know uh, i don't know like I, 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 the management people usually they're fine but let let it be a conversation between the music artists and myself like let's let let us play and do what we want not i don't i don't want any third party to decide like Oh, that's not going to be good enough. Or oh, we should do this instead. Like no, just just let us do our thing. We're we're having fun here. So to me, that's just the most essential part of it is to have fun and try to feel like there are no boundaries mm. at all. Because it, it this is to me what the what NFTs are enabling us um, not having any boundaries and just just creating art. That's simple as that. I, I totally understand and totally hear what hear what you're saying, uh, knowing and having worked with a lot of music managers in the past. When you want a collaboration to be organic, uh, sometimes the business interests really need to just step out of the room and, and let the yeah, artists exactly. do their thing. Um, you know, I, I think you bring up a really interesting point because, um, you know, having also worked with a lot of musicians in the past, uh, I've had so many artists reach out to me since I started posting about NFTs. Obviously, since um, the headlines and and the uh, and the attention that the space has gotten recently, and uh, both mu- both uh, music artists and also visual artists, and um, one of the questions I often encounter, uh, and I think you'll have some interesting insight here, is which platform to start on, uh, and which platforms are good for what reasons. And I, I think it's great because I know that you um, you know uh, were were an avid uh, an active user on Super Rare. Uh, you've obviously had multiple nifty gateway drops. Uh, and so I think you're really well situated to, to speak to that. And I'd love to hear your thoughts um, on which platforms are, are, are good for which artists and uh, w- what makes them each uh, unique. 
Yeah, I I like that question too. So, yeah, for me, it's mostly been super rare and nifty gateway. I feel like I might be biased in loving them because they're they've been the first platforms I've ever been on. Um, but reality is that it's extremely hard right now to get into those platforms. I mean, um, Steve Aoki is going to drop on Sunday. So, um, of course, like their threshold for artists who apply is like now extremely high as an artist. Uh, I, I definitely have this privilege of having dropped before. And so I'm kind of more privileged because of that, because I have this track record, um, of experiences with Nifty. So if I want to do a third drop, like, chances are I will have give the possibility to do so. Um, compared to a new artist who's just like brand new in the space, it's going to be really hard to get a, like a spot and have their own drop on a certain night a um, few months ahead. So for like for artists who are just stepping in, I feel like it depends on what they want to bring to the table. Um, some artists, they are doing, you know, like collectibles. Uh, a bunch of visuals, uh, series, and all that. And to me, the best place to do that is either Rarible or OpenSea. Like, there's no barrier for entry on both platforms. You can just start straight up and mint whatever you want. So if you're unable to get on any platform, I feel like, why why wait? Just try to make a name for yourself. Um, I mean, some people are killing it on Rarible, and it's not because it's accessible to everybody that you cannot have success on it. I feel like just it just depends on your ability to market yourself and your ability to have a really strong and unique project. If you have those two like abilities, you can make it work. Um, but there is no secret here. It takes a lot of hard work. Nothing just comes in like overnight. It's always lots and lots of weeks of intense work. Um, so people have to be aware of that. But um, there's this new platform called Foundation uh, that have that has this kind of unique way of bringing people on board. They have this system of invites where artists and collectors can invite people to the platform. So actually, they don't really have to do the curating at all. They, they, their, their artists are doing it for themselves, uh, which I find quite interesting, you know, um, for an artist who's like new in this space, they might have um, some friends around or people that they know that have those invites. And so it's it's te technically not that difficult to get on that platform and start minting. So if you're a new artist, try to look um, look out for artists who are already on the platform and try to, to see if they can give you an invite. Um, as a collector, I, I was able to invite two people on board um, so that's pretty cool. I'm not even on the platform as an artist and I can invite people like to, to start minting. So I got this crazy photographer who's going to probably start dropping something soon and another talented graphic designer who will be minting um, his first piece very soon as well. So that's, that's freaking cool in my opinion. And so that's a way to kind of avoid being let down by super rare or Maker's Place or Nifty Gateway who are a bit more strict on who they are letting in, which can lead to some sort of gatekeeping in a way, because of course, and I can understand they want to bring some really talented artists and maybe some some big names on the, the platform. So it's inevitable. Um, and what else? Yeah, there, there are other platforms also that can be probably um, more approachable, like Known Origin or even Maker's Place, I feel like could be more approachable than super rare and yeah like there's there's like unfortunately there's not a lot of platforms right now but i feel like it's going to change very soon um if nfts keep growing like that people are just going to start doing their own their own thing and blau is a good example of of that you know with origin protocol he was able to do his own auction system and i feel like that is really a step forward for artists to potentially do their own drop on their own platform. Or uh, I, I heard that Origin Protocol are interested into bringing some more people to do that as well. So I feel like this opens the gate to pretty much anything from that point. 
Um, I'm looking forward to see like how it's going to be like with platforms. Like, uh, are they going to keep the whole market or more and more we'll see people just minting on their own, on their own platform. That's something really exciting in my opinion. Yeah, no, super exciting. And in the, the spirit of, of what's to come, Alexi, what, what, what are you cooking up, man? Can you, can you share any uh, exciting up? You don't have, we're, we're putting you on the spot, but share only what you're comfortable, obviously. Whatever you can tell us. Um, oh, well, today I got off the phone um, with one of the most, in my opinion, prolific musicians in uh, the crypto art space. Um, it's not Blau, <laughs> but it's someone else who is uh, really an inspiration for me. And so um, we might start working on a little something in April. Uh, we had a quick connect chat today with just to see each other and talk a little bit, but we'll have this more creative call in the forthcoming weeks. So there's that. Um, there will be another Nifty Gateway drop eventually. No, there's no date that I'm feeling comfortable to announce or anything. I mean, I'm still trying to cool down from what happened last Thursday. So to be honest, I'm at square one right now. I have to find my idea and start moving forward. And yeah, I feel... It's ironic, but I feel some sort of pressure again because I, I, I went so hard on my five years project because I went so deep within myself and I did everything myself, like the, the music, the visuals, the promo, the text and all that. And so that was a huge project for me. And now I feel like, like what's next? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, it shows. That's pretty much what I can say. Um, I'm, in the, I'm talking to a bunch of um, music artists that I like, so... There might be some some little projects here and there. Um, oh, and I forgot. There's this platform called Zora. Um, that that can be really cool for people who are not necessarily doing visuals, because uh, you can now mint audio and text. So I actually minted um, my artist statement on Zora the other day, just just like that, because why not like encrypt it forever. Uh, on the blockchain as well, like along with my visuals. So I did that. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't expect to sell it or anything, but it's it's out there now. So I feel like it opens the doors um, to musicians to start dropping there and also anyone who can write uh, better than I do, <laughs> essentially. So yeah, I feel like that's a pretty cool platform. We'll see how it goes. Amazing. Well, Alexi, man, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for really putting your all, your, your authenticity, your, yourself into all the art you're creating. I uh, know that the community is grateful and we're excited to see you continue to grow. Well, it was a pleasure, guys. I feel like this this whole podcast lasted like 12 minutes. <laughs> but blew by. I'm looking, up, blew by. I'm looking up and it's like 42 minutes already. <laughs> so I feel like it's a good thing. Totally. So it I is. appreciate it. Yeah. It is. Thank you, man. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, well, that was a fun episode. I really enjoyed hearing what Alexi had to say. I think he is a uh, very, very special and unique artist, very thoughtful in his approach, very much dives deep into authenticity and a journey of self-discovery in the art he creates. And I really respect that. And I think uh, so does the community as clearly evidenced by the, the support he's, uh, he's gotten from them. What stood out to you, Matt? Yeah, man, you can tell that he comes from a very genuine place in every aspect of his artistry. Uh, you can tell that he has a deep love for the community and, and care cares really deeply about how this influx of attention uh, impacts it. Uh, I thought that he had some really great words for aspiring artists on, on platforms. And uh, I, I love just getting that insight into his creative process. I've been a bit of a fan of his work uh, since I entered the space. 1000%. Well, if you haven't already, definitely be sure to check him out online. On Instagram, he's Euphoria, A-E-F-O-R-I-A. And really appreciate y'all for tuning in to NFT Now. We'll be back next week. Uh, I got a lot of fun stuff cooking up and appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. So until then, have a great week. Thanks for tuning in.